new friends, it's Christine Turing, speaking from Sheffield, England, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my PhD research today. The title of my talk is Ecological Dynamics on Extensive Green Use Over Time. This research is part of a greater EU project, the Marie Curie Industry Academia Partnerships and Pathways Green Roof Systems. Um, the industry partner is Zinco, and the academic institution, as mentioned, is the University of Sheffield. Uh, in fact, mine is just one of three PhDs on this greater project. Um, and the purpose of the Green Roof Systems project is to uh, reevaluate the Green Roof industry for the first time since it established in the 1980s. So in this context, my PhD research um, runs parallel to an international plant screening trial, the largest of its kind. Uh, its results on species persistence can complement the findings on establishment and performance on those trials. But this research can also provide foresight into sustainable species richness, proportionality and weediness on extensive green roofs over time, uh, and on revisited species lists. But a quick background first. So there's no shortage of published literature from disciplines of horticulture, landscape design, engineering or planning with regards to green roofs. But research by ecologists is relatively sparse. More specifically, um, the study of green roofs as ecological objects subject to the laws and processes of nature has hardly been touched upon. There's been a small body of precedent work but this has been largely confined to unpublished German theses and unpublished unpu uh, dissertations and German technical documents. Well, thanks to our industry partner, one of the oldest green roof system manufacturers in Germany, access to some of the oldest extensive green roofs in Germany was possible. And it's interesting to note that um, although it's, it's always been of great interest how the vegetation on these extensive green roof systems develops over time, the actual development has been conjecture at best, and this is largely due to issues like accessibility and deficient scientific method. This research therefore considers how the vegetation of extensive green roofs develops over time. Now, this is just a 20 minute talk, so I can only manage a brief overview of this work. But let's take a, a moment to reflect upon the big questions that form the basis of my research interests. So one of my research questions is quite simply, how does species composition on extensive green roofs develop with time? Does it tend to become more simplified or more diverse? Another question is uh, considering the key factors for diverse communities to develop and persist on extensive green roofs. What are those factors? And the last question I'm going to cover in this talk is considering whether old extensive green roofs function like natural plant communities or whether they're rather more like novel ecosystems. So quick uh, approach of the research Basically, nine extensive green roofs were surveyed over two growing seasons in 2010 and 2011. Um, you can see they're all clustered around Stuttgart. Uh, some of these were prototypes at the time of their installation using uh, materials and systems that are no longer found today, like uh, styrofoam modulars, modular crates, or even certain substrates that aren't really to be found anymore. Some of the systems were literally developed in situ or on the roof as they're being installed because they'd never been done before. Such was the case of some of the pitched roofs. Um, the, the roofs surveyed, as you can see, there were three in Stuttgart, one in Nürtingen, one in Köngen, one in Tübingen, and three in Esslingen. Uh, the year installed, so the youngest roof uh, in 1991 in stuttgart Killesburg. that was about 20 years old at the time of survey. Whereas the oldest roof at the bottom of this table, the Plinza Friedhof in Esslingen, was 33 years old at the time of survey. So the roofs are all quite different 
um, both in terms of slope, as you can see on the rightmost column, and in area also, um, in construction, in materials. Uh, but what they do have in common is that they were all installed in the early days of the German green roof industry, and that they were all regularly maintained up until about 10 years ago. So with this in mind, uh, the results from these vegetation surveys present something of a snapshot with regards to what is present today. It's also important to note, uh, we are in the midst of the United Nations Decade on Biodiversity, and the re-evaluation of these systems may provide some opportunities to revisit how we do things and to match up with some of the biodiversity targets and the key messages that have been put out by the different United Nations bodies, including the Convention on Biodiversity and the Aichi Biodiversity Targets. The Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, of course, also has some comments with regards to uh, the the state of biodiversity on the planet and the opportunities presented within urban centers. So as said, nine extensive green roofs were surveyed in 2010 and 2011 in southwest Germany. The data collected, uh, basically the main tool was a one meter squared quadrat, which I built myself, with advice from James Hitchmo at the University of Sheffield. Um, you can see from the, it's one meter squared, so each copper pipe is one meter in length. Uh, the strings between the copper pipes are 10 centimeters each in size and dimension. So uh, with this quadra alone, I could calculate quite accurately the cover abundance in terms of percent cover of not only species, um, but also of life forms life forms being kind of a grouping of different species to simplify certain analyses. Um, the quadrat also helps to define, as you can see the right image, productivity per square meter. So uh, during harvest at the end of the season, all the above ground plant biomass was removed and dried in ovens until no moisture more was lost. So that was like a dry weight. Um, substrate depth was also measured per quadrat, as well as substrate uh, samples uh, in order to run FLL tests and get values in terms of physical and chemical properties. So that's the basic data that I'm working with for this research. Now just to give a quick overview of these roofs, this is the Roman Museum in Kungen, which has north and south facing roofs, and as you can see, it's got a bit of a slope. Another pitched roof, this is the Killesberg roof in Stuttgart. You can see the north-south gradient very clearly, south face being rather more sedum dominated, and north face being quite grassy and meadowy. Um, the Gettnereihof in Tübingen also is sloped with north and south gradient, <coughs> and it's bordered by uh, some tall trees. Uh, in Esslingen, the Plinsau Friedhof, this was the oldest green roof. It was 33 years old at the time of survey. Um, it was actually installed as an intensive, a simple intensive green roof back in the day. Uh, but it's established into a very um, persistent sedum cover. There's little patches of Tucrium and Festuca. Uh, the sampling was systematic in that it did not include um, any non-sedum areas. So basically uniform sampling. Uh, in Stuttgart, the Rathaus Garage. So this is the, uh, the parking garage uh, for the town hall of Stuttgart. And uh, basically uh, the buildings you can see beside um, are offices for many city councillors. So this roof was originally installed in 1991 uh, with the intention also just of, of demonstrating what, what can be done and obviously convincing city councillors that green roofs are a good thing. So this is the PV roof, um, given that name because of the PV, and this is the lower roof, which is right beside it, a bit lower. Then the last two roofs were in Esslingen on the the municipal bus depot, the Verkehrsbetrieb. There are two large roof areas here. Uh, this, incidentally, was the roof with prototype styrofoam modules. 
so that's our area two. Lots of uh, lots of um, allium shinoprasm. So I'm just going to go into some preliminary results um, from what what we found so far. So the the uh, variable of roof age is quite interesting, uh, if only because it's quite novel. There haven't really been that many works that have been able to look at old green roofs, certainly extensive green roofs since they're not that old to begin with. Uh, in terms of the vegetation, roof age really only had two vegetation-based relationships, namely um, older roofs had often had less cover and less species diversity of grasses and cryptogams. Cryptogams include mosses and lichens. This suggests that green roofs, or sorry, that grasses don't play a dominant role in the vegetation of old extensive green roofs. Uh, this directly counters the notion that extensive green roofs will progress along a tangent of natural succession into grassy monoculture or scrub. That certainly was not uh, seen or observed. Uh, in terms of, if we stick with grass cover for a moment, uh, the roofs with the higher percent of grasses um, actually tended to have environmental gradients that favoured grasses, so it didn't seem as strongly age-based. Um, those kinds of gradients included uh, north-facing as aspects, such as the one shown here on the Tübingen in Gertner Eichhof. Uh, mesic edges, some of the roofs had edges and shading. And also mounding by anthills. Um, some of the roofs did have mounds. Not quite as dramatic as the ones in the image, um, but it was, I think it was Lazius Flavus, the ant, and um, yeah, they basically mound it up, create deeper depths, and provide more uh, rooting space and provision for grasses. Well, this brings it to substrate depth. Um, and in fact, the other variables associated with roof age are important factors for vegetation development, including substrate depth, but also soil pH and soil organic content, which I'll discuss next. So there was a statistically significant decline in substrate depth over time. Uh, roofs in the two oldest age categories had quite low mean depths, 4 and 5.3 centimeters, uh, respectively, while younger roofs had depths greater than 8.6 centimeters. Now, granted, these are already quite shallow to begin with, aren't they? Um, and it's true, it was quite a small sample size, and there was quite a number, quite a big variability between the roofs. Nevertheless, these results strongly suggest that substrates compress and compact over time. And this is not kind of a, an exotic idea, is it? Well, in addition to soil depth, soil pH also decreased with roof age, while soil organic content increased. These variables are essential to vegetation development and may shed light into the growing conditions on extensive green use over time. Soil organic content in particular had numerous significant effects on green roof vegetation composition and diversity. Forbs, bulbs, and cryptogams all had negative relationships with soil organic content, while succulents had positive effects in cover grasses had no response whatsoever to soil organic content. This means that as soil organic content increases, i.e. over time, succulent cover also increases, well, whereas cover by other life forms decreases. Paired with substrate depth, which had the same relationships, this suggests a negative trend with respect to species diversity on extensive green use over time. Slope and aspect had numerous large effects with soil properties, including soil organic content, pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and depth. In terms of vegetation, sloped and north-facing green roofs often had less cover by cryptogams and grasses, and fewer species of the same life forms and bulbs. Um, actually, I think I said that wrong. Take two. In terms of vegetation, Sloped and north-facing extensive green roofs often had less cover by cryptogams and forbs, and fewer species of the same life forms, as well as bulbs. Grasses and succulents, by contrast, often re responded oppositely from the other life forms, such that grasses and succulents would have had more cover on sloped and north-facing roofs. 
this uh, these contrasting dynamics uh, suggest uh, well a dynamic with regards to how vegetation responds to such gradients. Yes, it's true. A larger sample size would probably smooth out the variation, both between roofs and in these responses. Now, in terms of intentional species and weediness, most of the roofs surveyed had over 70% mean cover uh, by intentional species with a moderate range across quadrats. Um, this could probably be explained because most of the roofs were sedum based and sedums tend to have a high percent cover. It does appear that variations in cover by intentional versus colonizing species can be attributed to environmental site conditions and, and to the colonization opportunities presented. Uh, again, these represent uh, variables like shade, mesic edges, mounding, north versus south faces. Now, I should mention, with regards to intentional species, which maybe uh, sound a bit of a subjective term, um, background info was forthcoming for some roofs through documentation and site staff, while some roofs lack any information whatsoever. So uh, the documentation, unfortunately, was limited to quotes as a precursor to sales invoices and can't guarantee that those species were actually planted but we still kind of have a sense of what probably would have been planted and we can extrapolate from the species list that we do have. So that's how this was uh, done. So if we revisit those original questions, how does the species composition of extensive green roofs develop over time? Well, there does se seem to be a trend of species impoverishment. What are the key factors for biodiverse communities to develop and persist? Um, one precedent work, namely uh, from Reid Miller, which was done in 1994 in Heidelberg, uh, that's a PhD dissertation, he suggested that improved water storage and depths of greater than 10 centimeters would help dramatically improve biodiversity on extensive green roofs. Butchart uh, and Reid Miller both thought that heterogeneous substrates would, would help uh, biodiversity and also observed the very poor seed bank. There have been a number of works that have found that um, the seed bank just takes ages to build up. So um, not to be very generous with seeding in order to provide that, that resource. And Reid Miller actually commented that in order to achieve the same degree of species diversity as that to be found in dry meadows, um, maintenance would be required, would be required of the intensity similar to that found in botanical gardens. Whether that's true or not, uh, I suppose is anyone's guess, but it's quite a strong statement. <clears throat> the last question was whether um, old extensive green use function like natural plant communities or rather more like novel habitats. Well, Butchart, uh, who published his PhD dissertation in 2001, suggested that sociological progress is slow. It takes 10 to 30 years for any kind of consistent plant community uh, entity to form. The plant community that has been defined for green roofs, both uh, extensive green roofs, but also especially kind of spontaneous green roofs, which are sand and gravel based, the tar paper gravel roofs, the Cedoscleranthatea is that, that community type. Um, although it should be pointed out that it's rare that all the required species will be president, present. Uh, Butchart suggested 30 to 40 years for this type of vegetation development and kind of concluded that um, given that the species on extensive green roofs are selected anthropocentrically, anthropocentrically um, and given the, the shallow substrate depth already from the get-go, um, that this really inhibits the potential development of natural plant communities, that it does tend to be a bit more um, haphazard. Some of the precedent work uh, and references that I was able to refer to include th the, those listed here. Some of these were papers, uh, such as Borncom and Kohler, whereas the others are pretty much uh, dissertations uh, whether PhD or Master's. 
so this is just a, a brief overview of some of my kind of preliminary results on this work. Um, I will be presenting full range uh, at the Green of Systems conference in March in Sheffield. Take a look at the website um, and feel free to send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the summit. Peace.